Good evening to another episode of Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Glad to have y'all all here tonight. We've got an exciting panel. I mean, look at them. They're all really, really, really excited. <laughs> there for a while, they were all sitting over there. So, but anyway, and we've already got a lot, and I mean a lot of people over in the chat as usual before the show even starts. Um, usually about 20 people join about an hour before the show even starts, and that's fantastic. Uh, Katie Dotson's over there. Uh, Donna Presley. Steve French is over there. Uh, Sean Mason. Paul's Messy Woodshop. Uh, just to name a few, Jay, Jay Woodshop is over there. So they're all over there having a good time talking about things and uh, enjoying themselves. So we really appreciate y'all being over there in the chat section. And, and I appreciate everybody on the panel. We're missing quite a few people tonight. Uh, um, Donald is sick, um, really sick. He was like he didn't want to be on and cough in our faces and everything, so he's not going to be here tonight. And then uh, Shane and Shelly, um, I'm not sure. They said that they couldn't be on. I'm not sure what's going on with them. But I know that, uh, and I couldn't get a hold of John Schaffner, so I hope he's okay. So, But anyway, we've got a couple of, other people that's on with us and we'll get on down the road. The only thing I really have to say is my sponsors, Devobal Technologies for web design, development, and hosting. Visit devobal.com. They're the guys that do my websites and all the other website at the website giveaways. And Olivewood 2000 for beautiful, elegant, holy land Olivewood. Visit Olivewood 2000 on eBay today and FastGap. Innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to fastcap.com. Great. I'm people. ashamed of you, Russ. You, you still got to look at your notes after all these shows. I know. <laughs> you know I, I try to do it and I mess up. So I'm like, I just go ahead and read. I print out a little note thing that tells me uh, I have to. So otherwise, I forget. But anyway, um, we'll go down the list and. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the stuff on our Corel video like we had planned, but uh, we'll go down the list real quick and uh, talk. And if you have anything that you've been doing in your shop lately, go ahead and tell us about that. Let's start off with uh, Patrick. You can tell us where to find you and you, what have you been doing in your shop too. Hi, my name is Patrick from Patrick's Workshop on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media places. Um, I've been working on my table saw restoration. And I got one restored, and I happened to get another one for 40 bucks, so I'm restoring that one as well. And uh, more videos to come as soon as possible, so that's about it. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, the one that you restored, the first one was your father's, right? Yeah, that yeah. was his saw from back in the day, yeah. Yeah, I watched the videos on you restoring that. That's pretty cool. So, And you got the second one for 40 bucks. 40 bucks on Craigslist, yeah. That's pretty cool. Can pass the deal up. Yeah, you showed a little design the other day. You're still going to do that. You were making like a table with both of them inserted in it at the same time. Oh, yeah. My dual saw station. Yep. Yep. Cool. It's cool. Be awesome. Glad, to have, glad to have you, Patrick. And next, Thanks for having me. next is Mr. Charles, Charles Deering. Hi, D. Uh, I have uh, woodenvisions.com. Go to the link section. You'll see all my links there. Uh, what, have, what have I been doing? Mainly patterns. I am now up to about 1,250 patterns on my website. And I started to try to do a video today, and my camera shutter won't open. So I borrowed my brother, so hopefully within the next couple days, I will have a video out. Nice to be here. <laughs> cool. Yeah, his uh, shutter one. I told him to super glue that sucker open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I I mean. That's what I would do. So I'm tempted to do it because the camera works otherwise. Without knowing me, I'll get it all over the lens and we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Well, no acetone will take it off and uh, it won't bother the uh, the glass. So you you can get it off with that. Now, and so will lacquer thinner. Just don't use a bunch of it because it all it won't bother the glass. But all that plastic around it, it'll eat that up. So. <laughs> And then uh, next is Mr. Chris, Chris Ahern. Hey, gang. Chris here from the Old Cranky Workshop. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube under the Old Cranky Workshop. And in honor of Charles Gearing tonight, I have a headset. So the feedback problem should be resolved. 
No more here in Charles complaining about feedback. I promise. Hey. <laughs> Any feedback from here on is it's somebody else's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what have you been doing lately? Um, not a lot. It's too cold to spend lots of hours out there. I was out there for a few hours today. Um, show you the picture I got of the thermometer. It was, let me get that on screen. Woo! 25 degrees, and the best I got it up to was about 42. Wow. So after a couple of hours, they, my feet just got too cold. I had to give it up. Yeah. So basically, I'm, just clean, I'm cleaning up and putting things away. So when the warm weather gets here, I hit the ground running. Cool. So. And then Mr. Matt Haas, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I have the Awesome Wood Things YouTube channel. And I've recently relaunched my Woodworking Top video show and rebranded it um, uh, Made by Nation. So we feature awesome videos made by awesome people. It's hooked into the subreddit maker community and I'm co-hosting. It's not just me, Ryan Bitters from Waylight Creations and Eloy Escajedo from Escajedo Woodworking. We, uh, we get together, we do a, a live hangout and we record everything on high def cameras. And then we take the high def footage and put out an awesome super visual show. We have pop-ups and we play the footage. It's freaking awesome so check that out everything's on the awesome wood things youtube channel um, come play along and we relaunched our makers rock collaboration last year there was six of us we did it you take a album and you know a 12 inch by 12 inch lp do you remember what those are um and you recreate it with anything in your shop and you give it away run your own contest and then there's a little self-promotion piece too there's no grand prizes it's more just for fun of course you can find sponsors on your own channel and give them away if you wish but that's not a requirement it's open to everyone makersrock.com you can sign up there's a little spreadsheet see what everyone's doing can't pick a duplicate and uh it should be fun a lot of fun it sounds like it. one question now you can read you're not actually taking a vinyl album and making something out of it you actually can take a piece of wood and make it look like a vinyl album you album. recreate the cover art in any medium you want okay the yeah. cover art gotcha. yes yes although okay. uh, steve carmichael did have a little out uh record album peeking out of his because everyone's was square but he had the little circle coming out that was supposed to be the an actual album he used a piece of wood and then he redid it he wanted to make one for himself because it was so awesome he did pink floyd's the wall it was awesome each little brick was a separate sanded down it was so nice and the one that he made for himself i think he used a real record in it so cool sounds like makersrock.com everything's there you can sign up sure uh and then next is mr russ meadows hey everybody uh you could have put me first. I have to go behind him. He, he takes the highlight, and I can't keep up with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and on uh, YouTube under Rusty Nails Woodshop. Um, what I've been doing in the shop uh, here lately, it, it turned off or not, but uh, I think I'm going to make some positive out of it. Uh, I'm practicing for a, a, an edge lit sign out of acrylic and I, I did me a first cut. I think it turned out really good after some sanding. I think I'm going to paint the thing up in the colors that uh, he wanted it in and uh, just have him hang it on his wall. You got it with you? And, um, yeah. Uh, it's a little hard to, hard to see it though without, it's not painted. That's all right. Can you see it? Actually, yeah, we can see it. The state of Texas, and uh, he's in a uh, quad club. They, they uh, fly those quads, mm -hmm. and uh, they're having a race, and uh, he wanted to make an edge lit sign. And uh, quads over here and Lone Star multi-rotors down there. Once it's cool. cleaned up, I think it looked pretty good. Yeah. That was my first attempt at seeing it. Just say, well, if this thing's going to work or not, and it does. Cool. My, uh, my Gatton CNC works real good. Garage works. <laughs> yeah. but uh, uh he, he, at least he gave me the idea to do more of those uh, acrylics and i think i'm gonna like that so that was my thing cool sounds like a plan 
I've been doing quite a bit lately. Uh, one of the things I did was we did uh, Makers Make It Matter collaboration. And uh, that's make, you can go to makersmakeitmatter.com and see about that. And I made the, uh, everybody made a little uh, item from our character from Toy Story. And so I chose RC, the little race car, and my grandson loves him and got a hold of him and pulled one of his little googly eyes off. So I got to get some more googly eyes <laughs> on him. So he's only got, he's one eye. So uh, I had the CNC cut the, um, make the wheels. It cut the round circle and then went in here for the rim and then made the little dots. And then what I did, uh, made these two. And then what I did was put it on my pen mandrel, mandrel on the lathe, uh, the two big ones and then the two small ones, and then just took my parting tool and made the treads on the uh, tire. So I, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. And then um, that's cool. I wondered how you did that. Yep, that's how I did it. That's neat. This uh, this was cut up, made on the scroll saw, the little grill. The uh, this was made. The dome top was made on the CNC. The other stuff was made on band saw, scroll saw combination. So I, I like the way it turned out. I think it turned out pretty good. Everybody else seems to like it also. So that's one of the things I've been doing. And then I got some new tools, which I did. I did a video on this, by the way. If you haven't seen it, go by uh, Simply Wooden Creations on YouTube. I got a video up on me making the car. And then uh, I got some, I don't know if anybody's heard of them, but they're called, one of the things I got is called Miter Set. And they're, they're you set your, it uses your miter gauge for your table saw. And it, you can set it with with these. Well, I'll get it open one of these days. You can set it with these for a very accurate accurate cut. So how this works is your your miter saw for your table saw goes in here and locks in. And then let's say that I want it. You have zeros on the left and on the right, so you can have it tilt either way you want it. And then you have these. This was the segmented one, not the standard. Then you just pick out how many segments you want in your bowl. I'll pick this one right here in the corner, which is eight. So if I want eight segments in my bowl, I'll take my pin here and put it on the eight and take the other pin and put it down here on the zero. And then I'll just bring my miter gauge up to these pins and lock it down and take it out and boom, go cut my segments. I so, have to get one of those. Those. It's, they're so amazing. Yeah, this is a segment one. I have the standard too. It's over there in the box. I just didn't bring it out because it's just 45s and all that other kind of stuff. But the segmented one is real impressive. Uh, that's the one that I wanted the most, but I went ahead and got both of them. Uh, so one thing that was neat about it, right out of the box, I took it out of the box, put it on my, uh, and I've done a video, by the way, not on the whole thing, but uh, of the new tools that I've gotten lately, and took a piece of two befores and cut the two befores up into segments, and right out of the box, that thing cut perfect. So I put them together and made this goblet. So, and that's just, this is nothing more than just SBF two befores that I had in the scrap pile, and it, it cut perfect, beautiful. That's cool. Yeah. Um, all about precision and that is a super awesome help that that those pins I yeah and it uses your miter you're not using anything special it uses whatever the miter gauge or the miter thing that came with your table saw so it uses your slot your everything so really nice and it worked like i said right out of the box i just grabbed some scraps cut these out glued them together and then turned the goblet and it worked perfect i, I need it yesterday a nice, nice, tight, tight uh, fit. So that's one of the things I was playing around with. And then I've been turning some bowls that are behind me, a couple of the bowls and everything. And then I picked up these um, three bowl gouges. I haven't tried them yet. I got the half inch, the five eighths, three eighths, I think. These are Benjamins. Hey, they $49 for three of them. So I don't, I mean, I'm going to try them. They may not be worth a flip, but for 49 bucks, I figured what the heck I'm going to try them. So I had a set of, I had a set of Benjamin's, uh, uh, small ones uh, that I had bought for when I had my lathe. They were for pin turning. And, uh, of course at the time I didn't know that and I used them for everything. And 
Of course, I, I put one of them backwards. <laughs> and when I gave to Charles, they was in dire need of some sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> and then today I went out there and uh, was playing around. And now I made my own lathe tool, that uh, the square tip one, uh, the, a while back. And I used it and I turned this maple bowl today uh, playing around. And I want to tell you that square uh, carbide tip tool that I made is awesome. I mean, it is awesome. Uh, I put a little video up on Facebook about me using it to doing this bowl and uh, I love it. I just love it. I want to turn, I want to make another one. You know, now I did not know this, but the square carbide tips come in different angles. You can get like a perfectly square one or you can get them like in a seven degree bevel. I think there's a four degree bevel. I've got the seven degree bevel on mine. That's what I used to turn this bowl and it worked beautiful. And I want to, the square one is supposed to be more, more for um, roughing things in. And then the beveled ones are for like uh, making, helping make contour. So I want to get the square one on another tool. So I'll turn another tool and make it and put that square one on it. And then you use can the also bevel. get a square with rounded corners. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, several of them out. AZcarbride.com. Yep. And so that's what I've been doing, having a good time. So um, trying to do, trying to, uh, I want to tell you this, I've been, I, uh, last year I made the commitment to do a video a week and I don't think I'm going to be able to do it this year. I've done four videos so far this year. Boom, 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 right off the beginning. And that's what my pace was going to be. But it's just too much. I mean, it's just too much. Let me tell you. So I think I'm going to go back to every other week, which I'll be making that announcement. It's pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and make it now. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going back to every other week because um, it's just by the time you plan what you got to do, time you video it and everything, it's just you're in a constant rush, rush, rush to get everything done in a week. I don't. Some of these guys put like not only a video out a week, but they put a uh, other stuff they do, and I'm like, wow, I don't see how you can do that. So I've got a lot of things around the house that I have to do, you know, like mow the yard and rake leaves and other things. So it's like I can't be out in the shop all the time. So anyway, the, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to biweekly, twice a month, every, every other week. So, but uh, Ken Moon I was out there. Uh, Steve French is out there in the chat. We've got uh, 38 people watching right now. So. Uh, and the reason I'm doing the going to go do Corel is because I had about almost 50 emails, people saying that they wanted to see some more video, another video tutorial. So I'm going to do some of that tonight. Uh, really wasn't feeling good this afternoon. One, I told my wife, I said, I almost canceled the show because I wasn't feeling good. I just started feeling very nauseated this afternoon and had a headache and everything, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So, but Jim Bashirs is out there, Matt Peel. Uh, TJ's Woodworking Shop, all of y'all guys are over there in Paul's Missy Woodshop, all y'all guys over there. So if you have any questions, Charles, if you can um, keep an eye on the – have you got YouTube open where you can watch if anybody has any questions? Can you do that for me, please? Okay. Shake your head up and down. Say yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, if they, anybody has any questions, I forgot to open up. Oh, and another thing is I'm going to just drop the screen down and uh, you'll see my pretty face for a second. And I'm going to, so I can open up Corel Video Studio Pro X9 behind the scenes and I'll come back to y'all guys. Um, the first, this is the first time, well, I had one other time I had problem. I usually don't have any problems with the Corel Video Studio Pro. Uh, one other time I had a problem when I was trying to install one of their extras that you can get for their package for the video and it didn't want to install so I had to call them for some uh, support and they were able to walk me right through it so no problem but my this morning about 9 30 10 o'clock Corel Video Studio Pro did an update and ever since it's done that update I've been having problems with it today when I tried to play around with it earlier especially on the audio side of the uh, video studio pro so we're not i wanted to talk to y'all about audio ducking tonight and we will do that but i'll do it at the very last so if it crashes i ain't got we ain't lost anything so because once it crashes i almost have to reboot the computer and i cannot reboot this computer I'll, the show will go away so i'll try to stay away from that we'll just talk about some other things about transitions and stuff like that 
so I've got it up and uh, I'm kind of losing my train of thought for some reason but let's go and I'll see if I can do a screen share my entire screen share and uh, somebody tell me can y'all see my screen yep yep cool. so this is what you edit with then huh yes Corel Video Studio Pro X9 so uh, uh, we talked about uh, not like a couple of weeks ago when I started off on this. We were talking about uh, doing this, and uh, so tonight I'll go over some stuff that uh, like transitions and how to cut and splice and a few things like that. Mainly uh, some of the transitions, but this is my video. All you simply do is this. This is a section of video from one of my. Uh, actually, this is from the lathe tool build, and I just drag it and drop it down in here, and. Um, so uh, what transitions are, which these are the transitions up here, these are my favorites. This thing is just loaded with literally like every transition you can ever think of uh, to use. And what transitions are is if you're going to cut and split or two pieces of video or have two pieces of video, a transition will go let you go from one to the other without just an abrupt. You can add kind of some special effects in it, so to speak. So I'll take this video right here, and what I'll do is I'll bring, come down into the timeline, and using my little scissors up here, if you can see the little scissors, this will split the video right here. So we're going to say we're going to go from one section of this video to another section, and I want it, rather than just abruptly go across, I want it to make a nice, smooth transition and use something, do a little special effects. Well, these are some of the ones that I really like up here. These are some of my favorites. Uh, these are all 3Ds. So you literally just take and drag the transition into position between the two clips so that when you're coming from one to the other, it does a little transition. Now, if you find out this transition, this, these transitions, and a lot of people do not know that, are totally editable. In other words, I can edit them. So what I can do is go in right here and just double click on this and this is going to open up the box on this transition. Right now this transition set at one second and you can actually lower the um, amount of time in tenths of second. It goes by 29. You just reach over here and click on this and you can lower it. There's 29 tenths of a second all the way down to 15, 14 tenths of a second, you just hit enter. And if you'll notice, it shortened up that transition in time. So now it's not going to take one second. It'll only take 15 tenths of a second. It'll go by real quicker. Sometimes if you've got video, for instance, where you didn't leave enough or you don't have enough, you the, the camera turned off or whatever, so you don't have enough space in between, you, it, the transition will take too much time in making. It's best that you shorten it up. Um, back to the box, I'll double click on it again. Uh, you can have soft edges. Uh, you can also determine now, up here you've got the upper left to lower right. If you've got these four, you can actually make this transition go out of other corners. If y'all notice right now, when I hit the space bar, it's going out down to the bottom right. I can make it go out to the top left, any side that I want that I choose, just by clicking on one of those arrows. So that makes it pretty nice. And then, like I said, you have all these transitions up here. Now, this is just my favorites. You've got the 3D, the album, build, clock, FX, all the, these are all of them at one time. Just literally hundreds of them that you can come along here and clip. It, I mean, I notice a lot of, some people don't use it, but it adds a little, like, something to your video if you're uh, doing transitions in between uh, some of them. And they're very easy to put in. Anytime you have a clip going from one to the other, you've had to split or let's say you're working on the table saw and you move over to a workbench. And so there's a split between that little 
that go on that section going over from one to the other a uh, slide of transition in it so they're pretty awesome so that was one of the things I wanted to go over and another thing is title uh, screens these are all the title screens that you can use. You can drag and drop in there. And if you don't want to select just a title screen in this, you can come down in here just into the title screen, put your marker where you want it, and just double click. And you can add text without using any of these rolling title screens. You can just simply come in here and add your text, anything that you want. And hit enter. Then you can move it around to anywhere you want. You can resize it. Put it on the top, the bottom. Now you can also, if you want it dead center, yeah, this is the alignment over here where you see you can put it right at the bottom. You can put it at the top, the center, left, right. So you can also change the color of your text. You can also change fonts. There's quite, uh, I believe it pulls off of every font that's on your computer. So if you have a big database of fonts on your computer, they are uh, open to be used in here also. You can change the size. It's just as easy to change the size by dragging and dropping it. So uh, this tells you how many seconds it's in there. It's a three second. You can make it underline, bold. You can write center. Uh, anything you want to, you can add a border, uh, outer stroke border, transparent text, uh, or you can add a shadow to it, uh, a blue shadow. Tons of things you want to do. And another great thing about this, if you go down to your text and right click on it, you go up here in this, you got the copy, delete, all this, you come down here to customize motion. Now we have our text here, and we can actually customize the motion of the text without having to use one of these up in here. Now, you can gladly use one of them, and I'll go back in a minute and show you how to use them. But one good thing about customized motion is you want it to come in a specific way. So it works. Um, how it works is I can just take this, and I can slide it off over here to the left, and then I can grab this little the end of the trail and slide it off over there to the right and I hit play and it'll scroll right across the screen. It'll follow wherever you have the, that little trailer, right? Yes. Yes, you can make it go anywhere you want to. You can also move it by position, position X, position Y. I can take it, I can run the X position if I want it totally off the screen. I just keep on running the exposition up in numbers. Can you all see, all see that where I'm moving that? And it'll totally take it right off yeah. by increasing the numbers right off the screen. So you can start to the, from the left and go all the way across to the right, and it'll disappear over there. But yes, anywhere that you want to put this, let's cancel this and go back and go customize motion and go back here again and we'll take this off the screen and then yes so if I want it to come across the screen like that that's what I was wondering yep <laughs> pretty powerful program it is it is really and then you want to continue off the screen you just continue to run the numbers up on the X uh, let's go back again and I'll show you one more thing. You don't have to have it do that as str a straight line. You can bring this into here. You can run this up to here. You can, then you can bring it. Oh, well, that's not working.
Now I can have it do a rotation at this point. Run my rotation up on my X. It was doing it before it came in off to the right hand side. So let's take that back again. And we can also bring it down over. I saw what you did there. Yeah. Once it gets at the end of wherever you want it, you can move it to a different position. Tons of fun that you can have. with motion and this is totally customizable whatever you want to do it you can change the size from here so it can actually start off um, let's run it on down and we'll run it back this is the size right here I just changed the size on it so it should by the time it gets to the end it should start shrinking there's tons of stuff whatever you want to do as far as make motion on text. Pretty powerful, yes. And then you can also, let's take this out of here. You can also cho choose one of their types of fonts and use it. Uh, for instance, I can use this. I just double click. In the box, use backspace, and then just put put that in the center. And now, when I hit play, that does that font that's these are all just selections that you can use up here if you want to and like I said that's the way you use them you just drag them drag them and drop them into the text this T stands for the title line once you get it into the title line you just double click on to it and then you can change it And there's tons of them up here that you got that you can uh, pull from. And if you need, if you want it to be longer, it's just as simple. You go to the end or to the front, and you'll notice I have a little like four arrow, and you just get on the end, and it turns to a two arrow, and I can just pull this and drag it and make it any longer than I, a lot longer than I want. Any questions out there? Yeah, I have a few. Um, very powerful tool, obviously. It looks like it's completely pro software. Um, I, my questions are more higher level. I mean, what's the approximate cost? Does it work Mac and Windows? Um, it's types of things. Yeah, uh, because you can get it. It's uh, for less than $100. Sometimes I have it even on sale for like, uh, 50 I think somebody the other day said they bought it for like 50 60 bucks so and I do not think it works on Mac I'm not a hundred percent sure now that you'll have to find out but all you got to do is just uh, go to Corel's website um, and look it up and that'll tell you if it works on Mac or not I'm not quite sure about that because I've, I've never owned a Mac uh, I've wanted to I've owned iPhones and and uh, iPads but I've never owned an actual Mac computer so Gotcha. Can you uh, stack up as many items on top of each other? Um, or are you limited to the number of channels that you have there? And the video tracks? Right. right. Yeah, you can you go over to this little button right here that I just clicked on and this is your track manager. You can have uh, multiple. Uh, let me let's see. 
go back to the beginning. You can have uh, all the way up to 20 overlay tracks. Okay. And the overlay track, this is your main track right here, your main video track, the one I'm using. The secondary one down here is called the overlay track. And so, so underneath this track, you can have up to 20 of the uh, video tracks. So yes, you can okay. stack them. And then the audio tracks are separate. You can have. Yeah, and then you can have two title tracks. Huh. Uh, you can have one voice track, and you can have up to eight audio tracks, music tracks. Uh, uh, does it handle the 1080 video okay, or is that all oh, based yes. on the spec of your computer? No, it well, it, I mean, y y yes, in a way it does, but no, it'll do a 1920 by 1080 without any problem. If your computer is not up to date, then yeah, you're going to have trouble rendering. But have yeah, you, when you go have, to the share, it'll take just a second to open it up. Okay. Panelist, I'm sorry I'm bogarting all the questions no, 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 that's here. All right. You see, you can change, you can go convert to an AVI, MPEG 2, MPEG 4, WMV, MOV, audio, or custom. And then you have all your choices under an MPEG-4. Yeah. You can actually do uh, fourth, what is that, four, let me put the glasses on. You can do 4096 by 2304 at 30 frames no, per that, second. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what about, okay, so this is the output pr uh, parameters of what you're going to uh, export out. What about importing? So, uh, videos from different sources. So let's say one was a 1080 input source, one was a 720, one was at 35 frames a second, one was at uh, 24 frames a second. Will it choke on that or does it just sort of seamlessly? It, it won't choke on it, no. But okay. once again, it has to do with what the horsepower of your computer. The program, okay. itself, the program you, itself won't choke. Can you import 4K? Uh, yes, this will import 4K, and it'll also actually, uh, I just showed you, it will also actually export 4K. There's your uh, 4K right here, 3, 3840 by 2160, 60. So it'll export and import 4K, yes. And it will do, uh, it will do MOV, which is from the, um, from your, um, Max, it'll bring in. Uh, all, it will bring all these in that it'll also okay. export. Okay. Good, good, ABIs, good. WM, uh, and with a yeah. And if they're different at different frame rates or whatever, you're going to uh, you're going to have to choose a like for instance up here in your when you go to make your. It's not going to show. Let me show it this time right now. In your settle settings and your preferences, you're going to have to decide on what you want at that point to set your um, your main setting to be. In other words, if you're going to run everything at 1920 by 1080, that's what your preference is going to be for the main video. And then you'll plug these other videos, at, at the other frame rates in alongside of it. And then you can export it all out at 1920 by 1080. Now, the problem is going to be is because if you're using, a, like, let's say, a 720, naturally the 720 is not going to fill the screen as much, at like the 1080 would. Right, right. Yeah, you're going to have to make some changes on that. Um, can you do advanced stuff, like put a mask around the top video and, you know, the unmasked yes, items? what you would have to do, here's your FX. You would have to have uh, the, this one I don't think has it because I had, um, that update took it out. I got a. There's uh, the master done through Boris Graffiti. Have you ever heard of that? No. Okay, Boris Graffiti is their FX kind of thing, and that would be here in the FX. It's not in here now, but you've got a lot of the other FX, and you would use the Boris for Graffiti for the masks. Is that sort of how like Adobe Premiere has its own separate app for effects? Yes, basically okay. the same thing. Yeah. 
Okay. There's a lot of a, pro, a lot of video programs that use Boris to graffiti. And is, is, is that is what you're talking about a separate application or is it like a window inside of this? It would be a window inside of this. Uh, it, I don't have it because when they update, that's another thing that I noticed today too. My Boris graffiti is gone, so I gotta figure out what that update did to change thing. It okay. we see how you have um, you have Vitacine here. That is an external app that's added to this that you can add to your video that does um, different transitions and stuff. So it would be Boris Graffiti would be in here like you have Mer Mercala. Mercala is a ex actually an exterior program that's in this set and you would actually drag it on to your video and if you have a shaky video, it'll actually go through and analyze the video and help take the shakiness out for you. Yeah, steady cam. Cool. Right, it's like Steadicam, right? And then you have another words is a uh, Adorage is another uh, transitional thing that you can put onto your video. There's a tons of it. It take me forever to explain all these. And then this is a lot of your basics, like for instance bubbles. I can just take the bubbles and drag them down here to the first clip, and then when you play the first clip, you automatically have bubbles. <laughs> And then if let's say that I want to edit this, I can double click onto that section of clip that has those bubbles in it and it'll bring up my attribute page, which shows me that there's bubbles onto this video clip. And now I can come in here and click customize filter. And now I have all these things that are added to these bubbles. I can change their ambience, their border, their body, their spot, their direction, their elevation, their density, their size, their variation, their reflection. I can change all those aspects in that video. So any filter, like any of these special effects that you put on here, um, you can keep the aspect ratio, that's something else. Uh, but any of these things that you put on here, uh, we can do what's, uh, what's another one we can do? would be real easy for me to show you. Earthquake, it will do earthquake on this one. So what this one is, is... Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you can do is double click on this. You notice it opened up the attributes, which there's earthquake in there now, and I can just customize filter and it'll open up and now I can change the aspects. I've got the big one, uh, boat, diving, handheld, reset to none, or tremor, tremble, or what is that, tremble? Trembler. And then you can uh, change the velocity and the magnitude. Very so those cool. are all little, neat little special effects and there's, and there they are all lined up. Uh, you've got uh, motion blur, some of them that are in there. You've got punch, you've got monochrome, you can change, you can add, and you can have more than one special effect on a um, on some of these. Now some of them won't work with two, but some of them will. So here you got one old film. Oh, that's very so makes, Instagram like. Yeah, so it makes your, uh, Russ, I, I noticed the videos in the timeline, it seems to show one frame as a still and then a green rectangle. Is that the only option? I can't yes. Use. Okay. Yeah. Now, it will show each if there is a different clip. Like, let's say that this clip had totally some. I just used the saw, but it, let's say this clip yeah. had totally something that was different on it than the main picture there would be okay. different from that, but yes, but then it would, the rest of the footage would be in green. If, if you deleted that middle clip, would the rightmost clip collapse to the left? Oh, yeah, yep. it just did. Yep. It's, got, yeah. it's called ripple, uh, ripple effect, so it automatically moves it all over. Now, if you're using the transition of the other one below it here, we'll put this down here now. Oh, I got This one. is your second one. And you notice how that puts it in the box inside the first one. Now this, if you come in here on this one and you decide you wanted to make some cuts, let's say I'll cut it, highlight that and cut this right here. And then I'll go over here, 
highlight it again and cut this right here and remove this this does not have the ripple effect this will stay in the other tracks will stay in position if if you had it the way it was before left center right mm -hmm. and then your each clip had audio hanging underneath it mm -hmm. and you got rid of the middle one would the audio and video slide over or would just the video like would it, would it disjoint this, itself no it will audio and video and the only reason the video and audio wouldn't slide over is if you separated them well yeah okay like if, if you brought in a sec a separate track of audio now i understand there's audio in the video itself but no, that's not going. No, you're going to have to adjust that on your own. So that you can't lock like a third party audio or like a, a separate spoken word audio track that you did separately. You can't lock that to a video track. No. Okay. Uh, Braxton wants to know how many video layers can you have? Uh, if, you if he's talking about layers, he's talking about tracks. You can have up to, I believe I said before it was 20. Overlay tracks, you can have up to 20. And the main one. And the main one. So 21. Yep. Blackjack. And then this one down here is like I brought in some a voiceover. Uh, this is for your voiceover. It has the little microphone there. Got it. And then the and that'll stay separate. That won't lock itself to a right. Okay. And then the uh, then you can also have music. I thought I brought some music in from over here. But I don't think I brought the music in. If if well, okay, I think I get it. Let me go get some uh, uh some music. And then you can bring actual music in underneath with your voiceover. Now how about how are we doing on time? 847? Okay. I want to show y'all audio ducking but I'm not going to do it till the end in case this thing collapsed because like I said, it might just do that. So uh, I tell you, these are your FX. We went over that um, and the audio. Um, I can't think of anything else to go over real. If you wanted to, uh, uh, let's go back to this and show. Now this is like a picture in a picture. So I can, I can actually make this a different size. I can make it. That's what I do in my videos a lot of times. I'll bring another picture up here, another little video, and you can have something else playing at the same time that that one's playing. These are the same tracks, so you're not really going to get. Let's go in here and let's. So you said you can put unlimited tracks on there, right? Yeah, tw up to twenty. I said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's go in here and get. Yeah, I'll bring this in so we can see the difference. So now when one's playing, the other one's playing. I'm going to start by looking at my pocket and back and down to the two slides and take them off. And um, now another thing about this that's really cool, they, these little outside yellow boxes, actually can, you can control uh, the shape of the video. But if you will notice, I don't know how good this is, you can see there's a little tiny green box inside of the yellow box in the corners mm -hmm. and what that allows you to do is skew the video fancy yeah so i can come in here and actually uh kenman wants to know can you do four all the same size if that makes any sense i'm not following along i could I'm put four busy. of the same yes i could put four of the same size squares up there if that's what, what he's referring to i could have f four uh here let's go back and Delete this, and we'll bring this in. Let's go in and add. So I can have that in the corner. Uh, I'm looking for some, all these little yellow ones, I have moved these out of here and they're no longer in there. So I can have that one up in this corner. 
And then, yes, I can continue to add so I could actually have four boxes and the backtrack running. Sterling, Sterling Davis wants to know if he can just send you all those clips and have you edit them. <laughs> yeah, see, look. Boy, it's like feet, of course. Picture and picture's cool. Huh? Picture and picture's cool. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, I mean, for the amount of money for less than $100, and uh, like I said, I think somebody told me the other day they got it for like less than 50 or around 50 like $49. Uh, you can catch it on sale, especially like if they come out with a new version. I think they've come out with 10 now, and this is nine. So you'll start seeing eight and nine go on sale for like, you know, 40, 50 bucks. So is this also the same editor you use for your green screen effects? Yes. Yes, it does green screen also. Nice. Yep. Now, the difference with green screen is green screen has to be on this secondary uh, track here. Um, we've already added a bunch of tracks, but yeah, I don't know if I have any, uh, I go through and clean up these after you, there is a limitation as far as, um, how many of these, these are all folders, work folders. And after you get, I think 20 work folders in that it won't take anymore. You have to dump them and start uh, add and more, but these are, uh, as for you're not losing anything. All this is, is if you're doing different, uh, videos at the time. Um, your videos will be in here. Oh, there's green screen right there. Now the green screen has to go on to this second track down here. That's the way it works. fit the project size. Yes, so now I can come in here and hit mask and chroma key. No, I don't know why that didn't stay the same size. All right, where are we at? Oh, mask and chroma key. Apply overlay options and already has my green screen there. And then if I want to bring in, uh, where is it at? Uh, uh, Steve, Steve Branch wants you to highlight, uh, what the heck was it? He wants you to highlight more than one clip in the timeline, then right click, then we'll be able to see if Corel has that feature what feature I don't know I'm, I'm only <laughs> following I, I I'm the stuff you're saying is way over my head he was so talking about right. grouping he wants to see if you can group audio and video together <laughs> or two video tracks together or an image and video okay well hold on just one second I'm right in the middle I'm trying to find a picture here we'll do the like, comment, and subscribe. And so there you have it. Easy peasy. Yep. Okay, now what does he want me to do? Let's cut this. I can get rid of this. He wants me to do what now? It helps to unmute yourself, Charles. <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. He wants you to highlight two tracks, and then with both tracks highlighted, right-click one of them. I thought I was there. unmuted. Sorry. <laughs> now Russ's video went away. Okay, now what I'm supposed to do? Or a group option. No, you have split clip, copy, delete, mute, adjust volume. 
but there is nothing to uh we'll try this i've never Just tried to highlight multiple tracks in the timeline then right click so we can see what options it offers yeah just hover on that contextual menu while you're talking so yeah that's what matt thing. said <laughs> yeah his doesn't have anything to group them okay thank you russ i mean i will go back that's something i've never done because i've never needed to do it um i'm not sure why um but I will look into that to see if you can do it. Because you can uh, grab a hold of multiple clips, but I don't know if anything in here would do. Uh... Yeah, I don't see anything that would do that. To my knowledge, it may do it. I'll just have that's something I'd have to research because I've never I've never needed to do that, so I've never done it. Hey Russ. Yes. Uh the wife just looked on uh online and she said she saw uh Corel's video studio pro uh X9 uh -huh. for uh thirty three bucks. There you go. There you uh, go. Jeff Robinson Amazon. says on Amazon. Jeff, sorry. Jeff Robinson says the green screen cuts out your beard. How do you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> By adjustment. You go in here and you change the adjustments on it. You have some different adjustments here. Clipping. All right, we got three minutes. You're going to be able to get your ducking in. All right, yeah. So that way, that if this thing collapses, so let's say that I go down here and I have, uh, you're not going to be able to hear it, I don't believe. And I've added all these title tracks in here. Let's see if I can take them away. Overlay tracks, go back to one. Hit OK. There we go. All right. So I have my voice track here and I have music underneath it. And I want to be, I want the music to bow out every time I go to say something. So what I can do is come down here and click on to the music track, right click and go up here to audio ducking. And it gives me these levels, the ducking level, which I want it to duck the music down to 80% when I talk. And you can set these things are some of the things you can play with till you get the settings where you want them. And you click okay. Now it's gonna analyze this. And if you can look here, this is my music track. You won't be able to hear it over the uh, if I play it. But if you'll look here, this is my music track. It has actually lowered the music everywhere my voice up here in the voice track is talking. Right along in here, you'll see I'm not talking. There's no waves forms. The, it automatically raises the music level back up. And then when I start talking again along in here, it automatically reduces the music back down and it will do that for the entire thing. So that's called audio ducking. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to hear it or not. I'll turn my mic around, but yeah, I think it's fixing to freeze up. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. Oh no. At least you predicted it on the live show. Yep. <laughs> Well, it did it today, but uh, it hadn't. <clears throat> it did it today. It hadn't done that uh, until that update this morning. Hmm. So I've got to call Corel now and uh, tell him, hey, look, ever since you updated, the program updated with your new update, uh, every time I have to do anything with audio, it crashes. So That's a feature, not a bug. That's what they'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a it's not uh, it's something that they all tell me you need to go in and change the setting or do something because the mm. last time when i had boris when i tried to put boris graffiti in it would not go in it wouldn't show up into and that's where you do all your masking and stuff like uh, matt was talking about and i had to call them and say hey it's not going in i can't see the icon and within about a few minutes they had me walk through it and i was there i will tell you this much i mean you're paying 30 40 dollars for that program their uh their um customer service 
Yeah, their support is fantastic. Every time I have called them, they have always been able to help me and walk through it. I've only had to call them like this. If I have to call them today, this will be the third time. And I've been using Corel Video Studio Pro since uh, number three. So that tells you how long I've been using them. Hmm. So. I just I just looked up and uh, I don't know what the difference is, but the Video Studio Pro Nine, who I told you was uh, uh, on Amazon for thirty three dollars, but they have the uh, Video Studio uh, Nine Ultimate. I don't know if that's better or than than the regular Pro. Yes, the Ultimate. And it's it's forty seven dollars. Yes, the Ultimate has more stuff in it uh, as far as a. Uh, more transitions, more you know, more of a package of extra, so to speak. Okay, yeah. So if you were to buy those two, uh, spend the forty-seven dollars and get the ultimate because you get a lot of other stuff that I didn't even cover tonight. So yeah, hmm. great, uh, great uh, lesson there. Good job. Thank you. And there's I'm um, a lot, lot, lot more. That is, I mean, it's a powerful program for the amount of money. Uh, trust me. Uh, it does green screen. It does. Uh, I, I mean, pretty much everything you want to do, and uh, it'll it, you can bring photos into it and put photos, still photos, into your. You could actually use it and just fill the timelines up with still photos and make a uh, and put transitions in between them and make a a photo. What do you call it? Photo video, you know, photo collage or whatever. Yeah. So you could do that with that also. And one thing good about if you did a photo collage, if you go to a file folder. That let's say you had like 40 pictures and they were all in one folder. You can drag and them into, you can bring them all into Corel Draw and you can drag them at one time and pull them down into the timeline and it'll line them all up for you all the way across. So it'll line all 40 pictures up at one time. So you don't have to drag all 40 of them one at a time in. So that's another thing that we'll do. All right, guys. Uh, I haven't been able to look. Uh, over there, I will look into whether, uh, and I'll report back to y'all next um, next show uh, about the locking of the uh, audio and video tracks together to see if that. Well, I'll go. On, I'll find that out. Excellent. Yeah, just to see if I can do that. I've never had a need to do it, but I know what now. It just dawned on me why. But I can see why you would want to do that, so I'll go and check it out. Because once you get this, um, once you get Corel and register it and everything, you can actually go on their website and log in with your uh, information, and you have access to uh, private tutorials and stuff on their stuff, and also other things of theirs that you get for free. So, as a bonus. I guess that's about it for tonight. Anybody got anything else? Thank you over there, Katie Dots and Donna Presley, Ken Moon. Um, I don't know who else is still all left over there. Opa. Opa's Wood Shop. They, have they been over there? Yes. Cool. Sterling's over there. Sterling Davis is there. Yep, Sterling Davis is over there. Thanks for watching, uh, Sterling. Glad you're feeling better and doing better. Hope to get to see you in Atlanta. Anybody on here? I know Chris O'Hearn's going. Uh, Russ, you're going to try to go to Atlanta? Yep, I already got my reservation. Cool. Matt, Matt, you going to Atlanta? Unknown. You're not? Undecided. Okay. How about Patrick? Are you going? That's clear across the country, buddy. You know? <laughs> How about you, Charles? <laughs> I'm broke, man. I, I can't afford to cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go, man. I've been talking to all you goofs for years, and heck, yeah. I can't. I can't afford to walk across the hall. Well, Star <laughs> Sterling won't buy my plane ticket, heck, Nevit. Yeah, <laughs> Charles is so broke he can't even pay time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're planning on going. I'm riding with uh, Daryl Jones from Dreadnought Woodshop. Me and him's riding up together, and we got it. We're gonna share a room. And I told him, my wife told me, said, make sure you tell him you snore. <laughs> 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 yep. So I, I, I warned you already. He said he snores too. So, but I hope to see a lot of y'all guys. I hope y'all are not next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sterling. I said Sterling's going. Yeah, I'll see him there in Atlanta. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. So, uh, <laughs> hope to get to see a lot of you. Well, that's about it. Uh, if you would like to see some more of these, I got almost fifty emails 
or over, I think it was 53 emails for people requesting to uh, do more Corel video studio tutorials. So maybe in the future, I'll pull up another one and do some more specialities and get the uh, audio problem fixed so I can play around with audio and also get the uh, Boris graffiti put back in there that it had had been in there before so I can show you that about masking and stuff. So Now, if, he, if even after him explaining it so clear, clearly and you still don't understand it, raise your hand because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna, I'll, I'll hand hand if you spend the 40 50 bucks and purchase it and use <laughs> it you will love it you will absolutely love it it works great and it's a very for the amount of money it's a very powerful very powerful program so yeah but uh okay guys there's only one thing thank you all for watching thank you patrick charles chris matt and russ and who else was on there that left a little early thank you all for being here we only got one thing left to do, and that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody, and God bless. And a friendly comment coming from Charles Jerry. Don't have to go home. You can't stay here.